state right now. Check this out, guys. Whoops. Living out here would be so cool. Wednesday. We're headed into British Columbia. We're just leaving Lethbridge, Alberta. We're gonna see some good mountain scenery today. We gotta deliver the rest of our freight in Fernie, British Columbia. From there, we're going to Kelowna, British Columbia, which is not too far away as the crow flies, or as the bird flies, whatever the saying is. But we gotta go around the mountains. It's gonna take a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a hike today. We got about a 10 hour drive ahead of us, I think. So uh, I'm glad you're here with me. I need some company. It's gonna be very scenic, I think. I think. I have a load in Kelowna that's going to be ready for me tomorrow afternoon. So I got to do a little bit of waiting because I'll be there tonight. I got to sleep in, I guess. And uh, they did advise me of that before and I agreed to it. Yeah, I'll wait half a day. Uh, the load is taking us back home. So we'll be back home late Friday night. We do some wedding planning. We only have two more weekends to get the rest of our wedding planning done. And then the next weekend, my American friends are going to show up. And then the fun begins. And then the weekend after that is the actual wedding. It's coming up fast. Wow. I think everything is on track to get done. I think. This is Fernie. There's the sign. Fernie, British Columbia. Okay. I've never been in this town before. I've driven past it before, but. Turn right on Dickon Road, then turn right. I will turn right on Dickon Road as soon as this person gets out of the way. Thank you. All campfires prohibited. Yeah, there's a lot of wildfires raging in this province right now, uh, north of me. I don't know how they're doing right now, but. Hopefully they're uh, under control already. A little turn tiny right little town. On Axel Road. Then um, turn what left. road? Okay, garbage truck, I'm coming. Watch out. What's this road called? Kuntunaksa. What? Who named this road? What language do they speak? All right, gravel roads. Ooh, this is a really small town. That garbage man smiled at me. It's a nice trash man. All right, somewhere around here is my customer. Now we gotta figure out how to get these pallets off my truck without a dock. It's gonna be fun. I can't show you this load, I apologize, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Turn left on Shadow Road. At least once I get these skids off my truck, like they're massive skids. There are skids that are the size of two skids, regular skids, and it's all one piece. I can't push it myself. It's in the front of my trailer, and we've got to get it to the back so they can get it with a forklift. Unless if they have a dock here somewhere. I haven't seen a dock yet. But at least once I have these skids off the trailer, I'm done. This trailer is empty. Then all I got to do is clean it up because there's two floors in there right now. I got to clean it up, make it into one floor, bring it over to Kelowna, and then just sit and twiddle my thumbs until tomorrow afternoon. Maybe we'll, no, I don't really have money for that. I was gonna say, maybe we'll go uh, eat supper somewhere, go out for supper, treat ourselves tonight, but I I, I don't have money for that. This wedding is, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, we're handling it, but it's gone over budget a little bit. It's getting tight, but it's gotta be a special day. I don't want it to be a cheap wedding. I don't wanna skimp on it. But at the same time, it can't be over the top. Uh, I want it to be a special day and I want it to be a day that I've always dreamed it would be. I want it to be the day that Brit has always dreamed it to be. 
But we're doing okay. I should, I, pr I should probably just not go out for supper today. Though. I should probably save that money. It's only three weeks to the wedding. Whew. Have I told you that yet? I'm excited, but I'm panicked at the same time. Well, that was fun. So now it looks like we are going to be... Uh, Looks like G the GPS here is leading me right along the U.S. border with Washington State and Idaho. Straight south of me right now is northwestern Montana. Straight south, just to our left. Somewhat to our left. Wait, no. We're headed south right now. Straight, straight, straight ahead of us. Whatever. South of here is northwest Montana. In a few, maybe an hour or two, we'll be just above that little uh, part of Idaho. And then we'll be going right along the border with Washington State, along Crow's Nest Pass here. Uh, Crow's Nest Pass. Very, very scenic road. There'll be a lot of scenery today, a lot of driving shots. I'll throw some music over it. It'll be very nice. Very nice. I don't get to see mountains all the time, so for me, it's extra special. Hope you guys enjoy. Washington State right now. Shout out to Troy over there in, in uh, Tacoma? No. Seattle? Lakewood? Seattle? Seattle area. Is that okay? Just generalize that. I know those big cities, they're like different cities all into one, but he's in the, the Seattle area there. Shout out to Troy. One of my groomsmen is coming up to my wedding. I am just above your state in Canada right now. Nice looking place. It would be so hard to develop any of this land though because it's all just mountains. I'm still, what, three hours away from Kelowna? You know what the funny thing is about uh, Canada speed limits? The speed limits are higher in British Columbia where there's mountains and hills and whatnot than it is over out on the prairies where it's nice flat land. The Coquihalla Highway? I'm not on it right now, but speed limit's 120 kilometers an hour. Speed limit in Manitoba? 110. I think we should have variable speed limits. On nice sunny days in Manitoba, speed limit should be 130. If it's raining or snowing or wintertime, bring it back down to 100. You know, variable speed limits. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. What do you guys think? 130 is a about 80 mile an hour, 80, 85 mile an hour. So the speed limits in the states are 80 mile an hour in the west across the flatlands. Like, they're doing just fine. They can handle it. I think we can handle it too. What are you saying? We can't handle that speed? Is that what our government's saying? Oh, we can't. They can over there, but no, not us over there. These are people who are not capable of doing that. No, I'm just saying. 
Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Let's boost that speed limit a little bit, huh? Not that it affects me, actually, because I'm still governed at 105, 65 mile an hour anyways. So it doesn't really affect me, so never mind. I'm just rambling. Just stopped here at a little pullout. Southern BC, still just north of Washington State. Beautiful scenery out here. Mountains are a little smaller down here in Southern BC. And they get smaller as you go into Washington as well. Living out here would be so cool. Man, property out here. But property out here would probably be like five times as expensive as back in Manitoba. I don't know if I've shared with you yet. I don't know what I've all released to you guys already, but the property we bought, our new property, did cost a lot of money, especially compared to many areas around the country, especially areas like the West Coast and around Toronto. Our entire property cost less than a quarter of what the average house sells for in Toronto. Isn't that crazy? Like I showed you the majority of our property, right? We got quite quite an acreage there and I keep talking about how big it is and I don't mean to keep talking like it's so big but I think a lot of you think that we make a lot of money and that we spent millions on that property eh? uh -uh. it was pretty cheap I think all of you would be very surprised at how little we paid for that big of a property it's because we're in Manitoba nobody wants to be in Manitoba it's a very undesirable place to be in the world and in, in winter time it gets down to minus 50 minus 60 summertime you can't go outside without getting eaten alive by bugs there's no major cities or major centers other than Winnipeg close by and Winnipeg is like a glorified big town sort of uh, I'm very surprised we even have an NHL team but uh, we're very enthusiastic fans that's why we can afford that but uh, we do have the smallest NHL rank in the league it's a pretty uh, remote, desolate place. That's why nobody wants to live there. That's why I like living there because there's not as many people there, right? I like seclusion and privacy. So that's why property values are a lot, lot lower in Manitoba than say out here in BC where you have this beautiful scenery and where land values go up because the weather is a lot nicer. It doesn't get as cold here, right? So I, I, there's no way I can afford a property my size anywhere else but in, but in Manitoba. So, the dream of owning an acreage out here in BC is beyond me ever. Unless if I somehow win the lottery one day, but you know, it would be pretty nice. Check this out, guys. Whoops. We made it here to Kelowna. I'm just dropping the trailer right now. I don't know if they're gonna be loading this one tomorrow or a different one we have here in our yard. We'll find that out tomorrow afternoon. So I gotta sleep in tomorrow. Goody. Hope you guys had a, a great day. Hope you guys enjoyed all the scenery that I shared with you today. It was a beautiful, beautiful day for scenery. Sun shining, it's 30 degrees Celsius out here right now. I just talked to Britt back home. It's seven degrees Celsius, that's seven degrees above freezing. It's cold at home right now, so I'm kind of happy to be out here where it's... All right, due to the fact that my other camera, my G7X, is acting up on me now and it's not working properly, which worries me, I'm going to be con continuing my vlogs on the phone for now. So I'm filming this on my uh, Samsung S7 Edge. So we will make do with what we have, and this is all we have right now. What's happening is, uh, I think that my windshield up here isn't quite properly sealed, and... When I went through that huge rainstorm before, water was dripping in and a couple of drops fell right on my camera before I noticed it and quickly dried it off and then put a bag around it. Uh, but uh, it seemed to work fine after that until I flipped the screen up, like when I'm holding it here like this and then I flip the screen up so that I can see what's going on. 
and see what I'm filming, suddenly the screen shuts off and doesn't work. So I'm gonna let it dry out the rest of the day, rest of the night, and we'll try it again tomorrow and see what happens. If it doesn't work again, I really did want a new vlog camera, but I can't afford one. I can't afford one for a long time. Uh, so we'll just make do with this for now. Uh, you guys, I'm sure, don't mind too much, right? The quality is not as good, but we'll make do and we'll do the best that we can with the equipment that we have available to us. That's two cameras now that I would have lost within one year. That's about $2,000 worth of equipment. Altogether, close to it, maybe like fifteen hundred to two thousand of equipment that needs to be replaced after the wedding. Sometime <laughs> after the wedding, oh, I'm broke. I'm so broke.